Ezekiel Morfi Fiofuriakwa, the president of the Sickle Cell Foundation in Ghana. Good afternoon, sir, and afternoon. thank you so much for joining us. How would you assess the management of sickle cell in the country? Well, the management of sickle cell in Ghana, uh, compared to a year ago, mm. uh, has improved remarkably. Mm. Uh, we have several centers across the country uh, where sickle cell patients can receive treatment on the number one modifying therapy called hydroxyurea. Uh, we have several areas where babies born are screened for the first time for sickle cell disease. Uh, these are the two major areas of intervention in sickle cell disease, identifying babies early so you can give them treatment and also providing uh, disease modifying therapeutics, uh, primarily hydroxyurea. And so if we compare where we are this year to where we were last year, uh, there has been a remarkable improvement. Right. For someone like me or any other person watching us who do not know much about the condition because I do not have or a relative do not have, can you walk us through a day in the life of somebody who has this condition and even has a crisis? I understand there is something called a pain crisis. Can you walk us through how dire is this situation for people who go through this condition? Right. The first thing to say is that everybody is different. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have two a uh, sister and a brother or two sisters who have sickle cell disease mm -hmm. and how the disease uh, plays out in one individual will be very different from, the uh, other. from another individual, okay. even though uh, they are of the same parentage and they mm -hmm. both have sickle cell disease. So it's important to understand that it's not the same uh, for every single patient. Mm -hmm. uh, for those patients who have a, a very severe form of the disease, again, even for them, day to day is different. Mm -hmm. One day they're perfectly okay and then another day they are not. So there's this variation in how the disease manifests in individuals and even within the same individual. Right. And when it's really bad, uh, which we call painful crisis, it can be really uh, painful, which mm. is why we call it painful crisis. When this happens, then the individual will have to uh, go to a hospital. Uh, luckily, we have several physicians in Ghana who are expert okay. uh, in taking care of sickle cell patients uh, and so for most of the large cities in this country, there are dedicated sickle cell uh, clinics where patients can go and receive care. Right. And for areas where there haven't been sickle cell clinics, there are now new sickle cell clinics being opened. Uh, earlier this year, I was in WA, for instance, mm. where the first sickle cell clinic uh, in Impressive. that part of Ghana was established. Impressive. So I, under I, I also understand that couples have a role to play. What should people who have met falling in love, they want to go on this journey together. What are some of the key things they should look out for before they embark on this journey? I think it's important, uh, given that the frequency of the sickle cell mutation in Ghana is high. Mm. You know, uh, the frequency is about 12%, uh, which means in 100 uh, Ghanaians in one room, 10 of them will have sickle cell Which trait. is good or not? Well, it's not good because we have a high prevalence of the mutation. So okay. it's important you bring up the issue of marriage, that people have a conversation about this. Uh, it's important to know your status, and this is also part of the theme for this year's celebration, mm -hmm. uh, building and strengthening global communities uh, and formalizing newborn screening, and also knowing your status. And okay. what that means is that before you get into marriage, it's important for you to know uh, whether you have sickle cell trait or whether your partner has sickle cell trait. And for the foundation, the key is getting that information out there. Mm. Once you know that you and your partner both have sickle cell trait, at least you then know mm. that for every pregnancy, there's a 25% chance that a child might have sickle cell disease. Okay. And it's better to be prepared so that if you do have a, a baby with sickle cell disease, first thing is to get them tested and then enroll them in early treatment that will help that child uh, to survive. And this means that it's equally very important that the country is undertaking the newborn screening yes. because right from the hospital, parents know the, the status of their children. How has that helped if you compare it to previous times when we didn't have that, you know, condition in the hospitals? So newborn screening, uh, it's been shown all over the world, uh, definitely saves the lives of children with sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. uh, not just in Ghana, in the United States, in Europe, uh, in, in the Middle East, in uh, Caribbean, mm -hmm instituting newborn screening, where babies are screened before they leave hospital mm. to determine whether they have sickle cell disease or not, yeah. and then being put on treatment. Mm. Uh, we didn't have this here 20, 20 years ago. Newborn screening has been introduced. It is not nationwide, it's still pockets where we are screening babies. And so each time we get this opportunity, we urge 
government uh, to put more resources to formalize newborn screening. So does, it, does it mean that if uh, a person gets to know the status at the newborn stage, mm -hmm. it gives more of a quality of life to the people because they know yes. from the beginning? Absolutely. Uh, okay. When a baby is diagnosed to sickle cell disease, mm -hmm. they are put on what we call penicillin. Penicillin stops the baby from getting infection. Okay. So the whole point of newborn screening is to identify the babies very early mm -hmm. and so that they can put on penicillin to protect them from infection. Mm -hmm. That is why newborn screening is done. And so the, the plea to government always yeah. uh, is to help formalize newborn screening so it becomes as routine as getting vaccination. Mm -hmm. Every baby born in this country right. uh, gets, you know, that, jabs. Okay. And what we always encourage government to do is somehow tag on screening of these same babies mm -hmm. who are getting vaccinations for them to be screened to see whether they have sickle cell disease or not. Right. And when they have sickle cell disease... Let me take it from where you just finished, sure. the fact about government. Mm -hmm. How has it been over the years? How has the support been for people living with the condition? Well, last year was a remarkable year uh, for us in terms of government support. Mm -hmm. Uh, that the National Health Insurance Scheme added hydroxyurea uh, to the drugs that are reimbursable. Mm -hmm. And so a sickle cell patient uh, who goes to Kolebu or any other major hospital uh, in this country, if they need hydroxyurea, which is the number one drug for managing disease. For every patient? Yes, yes. It's if, if you're a sickle cell patient and you go to hospital and you need hydroxyurea and the doctor prescribes it for you, uh, it's free under the NHIA. So Government has been wonderful. In it that. didn't used to be so. It did not. It only started only last year. just July. How of expensive last year. is that? Is that medication? It's not that expensive because okay. it's a very old drug. It's been around for a long time, right. and so it's not that expensive. <laughs> but what we urge government to do is to do more. Mm. Uh, so hydroxyurea was great. Now it would be nice to extend newborn screening to every baby born in this country. All right, it, it's, it's been quite a journey for for you. But what would you tell? people who are watching us about the disease. Is something to be scared of? No, there's nothing to be scared of sickle cell disease. Mm. Uh, this is a disease that has been with us for a long time. Uh, I think the most important message I will put out there is for us to be tolerant and understand uh, that we all have, uh, you know, things that are not necessarily uh, good health. And if when somebody has sickle cell disease, uh, the best thing to do is to be supportive uh, and give them courage to fight the disease. These right. patients are amazing. They are warriors. The amount of pain they go through uh, is not easy. Mm -hmm. And the last thing they need is for society uh, to discourage them from pushing on and living right. the best life that they can. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think I read around sickle cell a bit. Mm -hmm. And there is no cure, but there is a bone marrow transplant. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. How, how affordable is that for the ordinary Ghanaian? Yes. And is it widespread? Is it something somebody can walk into an hospital and... I mean, get any day. So a couple of queries. So bone marrow transplantation is a cure. It's a cure. It's a cure. Right. Uh, so sickle cell disease is a blood disorder. Mm. And so what bone marrow transplant does essentially give you somebody else's uh, bone marrow, similar to, you know, if somebody has a heart transplant or a kidney okay. transplant. So you're transplanting bone marrow mm. and that will cure the disease. Mm. Now, it is not as common, not just in Ghana. Bone marrow transplant is not widely available anywhere in the world. Uh, it is available as a therapeutic uh, in, you know, in, in Western Europe. Okay. But it has come at, at some potential cost to the patient. Very expensive? Be it is expensive. It's very, very expensive. Uh, there has been effort in Ghana to establish a program, but unfortunately has not been sustainable. And so the reason why I think the hydroxyurea um, deal that government made was so important, it demonstrated that government can intervene mm -hmm. and have a positive impact on the disease. Yeah. And so whereas we applaud the government for the NHIS, including hydroxyurea, mm -hmm. we look for government to uh, take it further uh, and uh, formalize newborn screening and also prepare the ground for curative therapeutics, such as bone marrow transplant, to be also become affordable. Right. So finally, what would you recommend as a way of increasing the level of awareness of people in the country? Well, first of all, thank you for giving us the platform. Uh, we always encourage opportunities by media to talk about sickle cell disease. Uh, as I said, every 100 Ghanaians in a room, 10 will have sickle cell trait. And so we have to just keep talking about it. Uh, what we've done for this sickle cell day is we have been on the air. Uh, this is not the first time we're doing this. Okay. It started on Friday with colleagues and multiple stakeholders 
nurses, physicians, mm -hmm. talking about sickle cell disease. Uh, and so the best thing we can do is that when we are out of here, uh, don't forget about us. Every now and again, when you're doing your news reel, just mention sickle cell disease so that we don't forget this important right. uh, issue we all have to deal with. And support groups have been very amazing, haven't they? Yes, yes. yes. Thank you so much. Professor Solomon Ofori, Fifi Ofori Akwa is the president of the Sickle Cell Foundation in Ghana, sharing some thoughts with us on the sickle cell disease. Still on Sickle Cell Awareness Day, the director of the Ghana Institute of Clinical Genetics, Dr. Ama Bene Akwesikuma, urged Ghanaians to show love to people living with sickle cell. The Ghana Institute of Clinical Genetics today joined the world to celebrate the 2023 Sickle Cell Day in Accra. The celebration has the theme, Improving Sickle Cell Disease Care for All. Educational institutions, let's support them. People living with sickle cell disease don't want pity. They want support. And they are very intelligent. Employers understand their condition. People living with sickle cell disease, give off your best when you're feeling good. So that when you're not feeling so good, it will be appreciated. We believe that today we should make more noise. We should let our voices be heard because um, people should actually know their sickling status. That's where it starts from. And if we continue in this path, what is going to happen is that people will know their sickling status. Eventually, I mean, we'll be taking sickle cell out of this world because um, GNS Foundation, we have been working closely with the sickle cell clinic in Kolebu and I must say that we've seen so many things happening, lives have been lost, people have been stigmatized, but these things are so avoidable and preventable. Even though we are still facing stigmatization, we need to be more open about the condition and be in control of the narrative. So I want to encourage everyone out there I know the road is tough. I've gone through it myself, but then I am a living example of what is possible. So please be encouraged and make the best out of everything that